Hello there, welcome to the Houseman Teaching Channel. Thank you so much for supporting this teaching channel. If you find this channel useful, please share it to your friends. Today we are going to talk about HbA1c. Is your patient telling the truth? As I mentioned in the previous video, HbA1c is used as a diagnostic test for diagnosing diabetes mellitus. HbA1c of above 6.3 is a diagnostic for diabetes mellitus. Also, in the previous video, we also learned that HbA1c is a way to measure sugar control in a diabetic patient. These are the numbers you need to memorize. Please pause this video if you haven't memorized these figures. Measurement of HbA1c is important. As discussed in the previous video, the UK PDS study shows that every 1% of improvement of HbA1c results, there is a significant improvement in any diabetes mellitus related complication. So what is HbA1c, also known as A1c, also known as glycated hemoglobin? Glycated means sugar. You see, when sugar is in your blood, sometimes it irreversibly attached to the hemoglobin. So the higher the blood sugar concentration, the more sugar irreversibly attached to the hemoglobin. So by measure the concentration of the glycated hemoglobin, it reflects the average sugar concentration in the blood over time. As we know that blood sugar in the blood tends to rise and fall throughout the day, but the concentration of the HbA1c remains fairly stable and constant. We also know that 1% of red blood cells in our body destroy daily, then there are equal numbers of new ones are formed. As the lifespan of the red blood cell is about 120 days, hence HbA1c reflects the mean sugar level in the body for the duration of the lifespan of the red blood cell which is around 120 days. Well, actually, it reflects the blood sugar for the past 8 to 12 weeks even though the lifespan of the, the red blood cell is around 120 days. HbA1c is not a perfect tool to measure sugar. It depends a lot on the red blood cell and, and its lifespan. So this is a problem sometimes. You get a falsely high HbA1c when there is a low red blood cell turnover because there is a lot of older cells. This is seen in iron deficiency anemia, B12 deficiency and folate deficiency. You also see a falsely low values of HbA1c when there is a high red blood cell turnover. That means there is a lot of younger cell. This is also seen in those who are under erythropoietin therapy, hemolytic anemia, patient on treatment for iron B12 folate deficiency. Chronic kidney disease patients can also have a falsely high HbA1c and have a falsely low HbA1c. High urea can cause a high HbA1c because of the interference from the carbamylated hemoglobin. Chronic kidney disease also can cause low HbA1c in a patient undergo hemodialysis and patient on erythropoietin therapy. Hemoglobinopathy or Hb variant such as thalassemia can cause false Hb1c results in some lab. So Hb1c is not appropriate for diagnosis of diabetes in adolescents less than 18 years old since the diagnostic cutoff point are those are above 18 years old. Patients taking medication that may cause rapid glucose such as patient on steroid, antipsychotic, patient taking iron supplements which may falsely lower the Hb1c values. Patient on with acute pancreatic damage, including pancreatic surgery, presence of a genetic or hematological or and its related factors that influence A1C and its measurement, such as hemoglobinopathy, rheumatoid arthritis, chronic liver disease, post splenectomy, patients in chronic kidney disease stage four or stage five, and especially those on erythropoietin injections, anemia due to iron or B12 or erythropoietin deficiencies. There are different ways or methods on how the lab measure HbA1C, but we are not going to discuss the details in this video. So this is Mr. John, your typical diabetic patient's blood sugar reading. He says he faithfully measured his blood sugar level at home and he is very happy with his blood result. He says he's compliant to his diet and the medication you prescribed to him. You saw the trend and you are happy at his result. Good fasting blood sugar, good postprandial sugar value. Then you look at his HbA1c result, it is abnormally high. You check the possible error and there is none. How could this be? So you sense Mr. John is not telling the truth on his blood sugar monitoring. So what is Mr. John's average blood sugar at home? Well, you can convert the HbA1c value to his average blood sugar in millimoles per liter by taking the HbA1c value multiplied by 2 and minus 5. For example, if Mr. John HbA1c is around 11, so 11 multiplied by 2 minus 5, you get 17. That means Mr. John average blood sugar in the lifespan of 18 to 12 weeks is around 17 millimoles per liter. His sugar is not controlled. 
So his sugar monitoring at home is probably not right. So we explain to him probably he need to do certain intervention to control his blood sugar such as as what we explained previously that every 1% reduction of HbA1c can reduce the diabetes mellitus complication. So how do we do that? First, control his fasting blood sugar level. Once the fasting blood sugar level is controlled, then we can focus on controlling his postprandial sugar. This is because when HbA1c is high, the fasting blood sugar has more influence over the HbA1c. Once the HbA1c improves, then the postprandial sugar has more influence of every HbA1c value. The take-home message is this. HbA1c is a good reflection of patient's blood sugar control. HbA1c is not accurate if hemoglobin is affected either in decrease or increase red blood cell turnover. The average blood sugar in millimoles per liter is measured by HbA1c multiplied by 2 minus 5. To achieve good HbA1c control, fix the fasting blood sugar first followed by the postprandial sugar. Hope you enjoy this video.